So we've got the rebar in place here for the footings, and you can see we've got two bars running in the bottom of the footing and two bars suspended above for the top of the footing. Now we've lapped these a good 24 inches and tied them off with the twisty ties, uh, and we've got just a, a temporary piece of rebar across the top here that's, ho that's holding these uh, top places, pieces in place. Now when the electrical comes in, we need to know if we're going to have a service panel on the building. In this case, we have an electrical panel that will be on this north-facing wall. And so in an area somewhere close to where that panel might go, we're going to have what's called a U for ground. This is basically a, a long piece of rebar. It's run down into the foundation and extends out. Oh, it's about a 20-foot piece, in, all told. Now this piece is required to ground the electrical panel into the slab itself. So this needs to be in place before we pour our slab. We've also run a piece of conduit here that will run out uh, as a home run to the electrical panel down in the slab. And we can also go up the wall and out into the roof line, but there's some places where it's actually going to be easier to run a uh, conduit down through the bottom of the slab. Now this doesn't have to end up buried too deeply in the slab, it just needs to go down and be out of the way of the insulation and other materials so that we can keep, it, uh, keep our insulation flat before we do our pour. Now you need to check with your local power company. Most companies don't want more than about 270 degrees of turns from where the power comes uh, from its source into the building. So here we've got our 90 degree sweep coming up uh, right to our panel location and we've got a pull string in there and like I say we've been sure to set it up so that we don't have more than 270 degrees worth of turns. Now this is something you'll want to have also near your U for ground so that you've got the, all the electrical uh, connections you need in the same place when the electricians come back to put the uh, panel on the building. So you can see here in the bottom of this interior wall footing, we have a structural wall that uh, lays in the middle here, so we have to have a bearing uh, footing underneath it. We've run the conduit for the home run back to the electrical panel, and in this case it's just on top of uh, the rebar that's going to be set up in the footing. Now we'll actually pull this rebar up when we pour, uh, get it up off the ground, so there's enough flexibility in this pipe to allow us to do that. And then run this again, keeping it towards the bottom. We don't want to have the the pipe uh, up in the air in here without support underneath it because then when we pour the concrete it'll have a tendency to just snap this under the weight of the concrete. So we got it down where it's supported underneath. Run it along here, again keeping it close to the wall and we get up into the bottom of the slab area. We've just dug out enough to basically keep the top of the pipe flush with uh, the bed that's going to be our base for the insulation and for the base of the concrete. And we've run this all the way out and we've taken it to our first stop over here, which is a switch that's actually a three-way electrical switch, which means we have a, a light switch here that powers the light in the house, and then there's a light switch on the other end of the building that also powers the same switch, so you can turn it on and turn it off from either side of the room. So we've got conduits running back over there to carry power back and forth between the two, and then a, a third line which runs out to power another switch on the other side, so we basically can tie the main line into that uh, second line and create a secondary source at the other end of the building. In this building, the clients had requested floor plugs in the concrete slab. So we've gone ahead and laid our conduit and our three plug locations out on the floor and set up our boxes. The key with these boxes is to have them above the level of the slab. You do not want to finish them flush with the slab. If you finish them flush, it's going to be difficult to get all of the, uh, the equipment in there and get it set up the way that you want it when it's all said and done. So the electricians would actually prefer you leave it high. They can then come back with a sawzall and cut it flush with the concrete. Uh, it's a little bit backwards than what might be intuitive, but that's, that's the way that the electricians ask for it to happen. So basically set them. You can put little pieces of rebar down into the grade that will hold them at, at the right elevation and, are, and in place. And as you're doing your pour, you just want to make sure that they stay above the finished level of the concrete. 